ExoCAD AI implant crown design. It's more like AI assisted here. We're gonna go ahead and hit anatomic crown screw retained and scan body scan. Then we're gonna go ahead and hit save and then design. The first thing ExoCAD is gonna want is your scan files. Now, if you're scanning with iTero Illumina or another type of scanner that's fully integrated, they'll just come right in. You won't have to find them. But in this case, I loaded them up any STL plier OBJ and pick your orientation from the straight down occlusal view. And then you'll get to the second tab, which is this AI button. And you're gonna go ahead and hit start AI calculation. And this whole process takes about 60 seconds, sometimes 90 seconds, depending on your internet speed and things like that. It is a cloud-based calculation, so it has to be done when you're connected to the internet. And so after about 60 seconds in this particular instance, you'll get a proposal. And the proposal, you get to either give it um, the go-ahead or you could make modifications to it. In this case, it's a really nice proposal. It looks like it kind of mirrored image the contralateral tooth automatically for me and put it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and give it the full star review and hit the little checkbox at the top and hit next. So now comes the part of finding my scan body. In this case, I used a true abutment scan body for a Zimmer tapered screw vent 3.5 implant. So I find that. And then I select the tie base that I want to use. And, this, and then I go ahead and trim the virtual scan body there on the left to make it match the amount that's sticking out of the tissue. So I drag that little slider up about a few millimeters to trim it. I click that little button there and then it uses iterative closest point best fit algorithm matching with a color heat map for accuracy. And then we're off to the next stage. This is an optional step. So I usually just hit next here. It's a step where you could define the subcritical contour line. And then another optional step where you could define the emergence profile of the soft tissue. This is a step that I just usually skip. I hit next and it automatically creates dynamic articulation and a screw channel. Um, that will be through the implant restoration and you're in the free forming step. It auto cut the occlusion and proximal contacts. So there's basically nothing to do here. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the scan and look at the tissue pressure and smooth using my smooth tool any little areas that I want in my subcritical contour area to determine tissue pressure. Um, this is also an area where you can um, modify tissue pressure where you could um, cause the gingiva to relax and come incisally, or you could put high pressure and have it come apically. And this is where I look at distance to scan data. I change my scale and I usually um, go ahead and hit the nearest point distance. And, you know, anywhere between, depending on the area, you 200 to 500 microns of pressure. And then blue would indicate negative pressure whereas red indicates positive pressure into the tissue. And green represents almost no pressure. And you have the color map right there if you're confused about what the pressures are. And you could add and remove and smooth and flatten and all your kind of tools there. So now I'm going right back to proximal contact view. Everything looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit next here. And I'm gonna hit remove any interferences. And that is basically it, guys. Let's see what we get. Yep, so that is the end of design. Here's our little restoration. And there's our analog. Here's our tie base right here. And we can see how it goes under the tie base. So this is implant crown design in a nutshell. Let me just remove my min thickness so you can see the screw hole right there. And so that little bad boy will get printed or milled and then bonded onto the tie base and screwed in to the mouth just like this. So anyway, I hope this helps. Super easy and so simple to do.